There's just so much potential in every single one of these wigs. For some reason, I've decided that it's up to me to really pull out the potential. This is the career path that I've chosen. Could have been a banker. <laughs> <sighs> Hello, my name is Ryan Carpenter. I'm also known as Fina Barbatal, and I am a wig stylist for Elite Drag Queens. So styling hair has always been part of my drag journey since the beginning. Whatever wigs I would see, they just never really encapsulated what I wanted. So I would always have to do some sort of like finessing to them. I feel like I started styling wigs professionally when I moved to LA. I was having a hard time finding work and Katya had a bunch of wigs lying around. She's like, well, why don't you style these so I can wear them on, on my web series? Trixie Mattel. Barbara Bonaducci, AKA your mom's huge ass at large, Katya. And so she went away on tour. When she came back, I had like a countertop full of like big giant styled wigs. When she saw all that, she was like, okay, I'm going to invest in you. So as far as working with Trixie and Katya, I would consider myself their conservator in the sense that they come to work fully painted and hair and, and all that. I'm there just in case, you know, things start to like fall off or misplace and I can kind of, you know, remold and, and uh, reshape. Why don't I show you some of my latest pieces that I think are completely stage worthy. First, I have this sort of like pinstriped look. I use some glue and these like rhinestone strips to kind of give it this look. Because it's synthetic, you can really get a lot of good teasing in there and get it nice and airy and kind of soft. And that way, when it is so big, it doesn't feel heavy. This next wig is really interesting. The whole thing is made of this like super iridescent tinsel. And I love the, how the crystals kind of make it look like a crown. This is a helmet, which is good for drag because you need something very sturdy. You could fall off, land on your head, and not have a concussion. You could ride a bike in this. You could ride a motorcycle. In this wig, I've double stacked it, which means there is the base wig, and then a few inches back, we place another wig and then stuffing to create more volume. The main product that I use for doing such a big, huge style like this would be Got To Be Glued and my trusty hair dryer. I would spray certain sections and use the hair dryer to kind of freeze that into submission. Let's start off with some basic stylings of a classic drag hair. In front of me, I have this great, wonderful wig from Wigs by Vanity. It is a premium lace front. And by premium, I mean that the hair fibers themselves are made very well. They're high quality. The actual lace is high quality. So I just go in and I do sort of a simple root tease. It's really good to use a nice, stiff, tight, bristled brush, and you're brushing down towards the root and out. It's kind of like drag makeup. Everything looks a mess until like the last two minutes. And before you know it, we have the beginnings of a style. So now that it's all pushed back and teased up, we're gonna move on to our metal combed paddle brush. Metal combs are better for synthetic hair because the plastic uh, combs heat up the hair and can kind of like uh, fudge it up. So we take this and I use it to smooth out the ends. Now I'm going to use a smoothing brush to work the front of the wig. And we can use this to sort of brush the hair in the front up and back. And you see how that's like smoothing it out? This isn't gonna be like a perfect style. This is more like flirty bedroom hair. So now that I'm finished, I'll go in with a little bit of a, a finishing spray of this got to be glued freezing. <laughs> Once I put it on my head, I will, I'll zhuzh it some more and I'll, I'll spray it some more and get it to where I want it to be. 
So I started performing professionally in drag when I was 18. Once I stepped onto that stage and performed for the first time, there was no looking back. Today, this is going to be a classic Fina look. It was not cool to do drag where I was from. So I kind of grew up fearless. So after the eyes, I always start with contour, cream contour and cream blush, which to contrast now, I'll go in with Dermablend Cover Cream, which is my tried and true foundation. It's hard to say like how Fina came about. I think the character for me has just been developed over such a long time. Okay, this part gets powdery and messy. Okay, well, that's the final look and we're done. Thoughts? I always feel like when the lashes go on and I get the full look in the mirror, I'm like, okay, now I can start to feel it. All right, now we are ready to get wigged. So I've never worn this wig before. So first things first, I'm going to trim the lace. So I'm trimming right up to the hairs because it lays better that way. And then I take a little bit of got to be glued freezing spray and I lightly spray the inside of the lace and then lightly spray my forehead. Flip the hair back, bring it forward and lay it down. This wig is so superbly designed that it doesn't really require glue at the moment. If I was going to perform, I would put a little bit of glue on the sides. It's really crazy to me that drag has become such a political conversation. You see people talking about drag queens and it's like, you know, just leave us alone. We're not here to bother anybody. We will march when it's time and when, you know, our rights are being threatened and things like that. Drag has no guidelines, no rules. It's for everybody. People can say things and judge and do whatever they want, but they have no power over it because you can still do it. Everybody's got their own definition of what their drag is. I think you can get out now. Get. Get. Yeah. I have to go. 